All right, everybody, I'm Nick with Ministry Boost, and I have Kenny here with me, and we're talking about the New Family Retention Plan. It's a resource bundle that we put together, together to help churches recognize guests that are coming and get them to come back for a second time and then come back again and eventually get connected in their church because retention is kind of like the low-hanging fruit of church growth. It's really hard to get somebody to come to church and visit for the first time. It's not as hard to get them to come back, but you need a plan. So we created this resource. If you got this resource, this video is gonna help you as we talk about recognizing second time guests. If you don't have this resource, use the link below to get it so you can apply this in your church. But like I said, we're talking mostly about recognizing second time guests. When they come back, how can we help them feel like they have been seen and remembered, like we know that they visited and they're back again. And Kenny, you put most of this content together in the resource. So I'm gonna invite you in and tell us a little bit more about this conversation that we're gonna have. Right, now I'll clarify, I put most of the content together for this section of the resource. We had some amazing other people that uh, all helped with this. But yeah, the second time guest part was uh, a piece that I owned. And we sh kind of shared this in, a, in another bonus video and some other places in here that there's some numbers that, that are floating out there. And Nick, you correct me if I'm wrong, but it's something like you know 20% of first time attendees come back, but 40% of second time attendees stick at your church. Is that, right? Is that what the, the number was? Yeah, and that's from that book, What Every Pastor Should Know. So I don't think it's based on tons of great data, but even our experience talking with leaders, if you can keep at least 20% of your first time guests, which is the goal. Now our goal with this resource, to help you to push that up to 30, 40, you know, like it'd be even right. better. But certainly the people that come the second time, that book says you should be able to keep 40% of those. Again, maybe this resource and applying it can make that even better. But yeah, that's one, one number to look at. Right, now this is why we created an entire stage and a framework around the second time visit. Because if we think about it, every church tries, they, they pull out the stops to make sure that somebody's first time visit is, is spectacular. You know, that they're greeted in the parking lot, there's signs out there greeting them, that they're gonna have like a concierge type experience when a family pulls in and they walk into your building. And so like we, we put a lot of emphasis on that first time visit, which is which we should, we absolutely should. It's a, it's a, it can be a terrifying moment for people. But it's, isn't it interesting to think about though, that when that family maybe comes back for the second time, and uh, they're not gonna park maybe in the first time guest parking spot, and they know where to go, so they don't have to go to that first time check-in area. And so they're gonna fumble around on the computers, like trying to remember from the last week when they saw somebody else do it. And because they didn't go to any of those places that we have kind of marked off or reserved for first time guests, it's possible that somebody's second time visit can go completely unnoticed. And, um, and so they can have like this really spectacular, stellar, irresistible first time experience and then go to complete anonymity on their second time visit. And so some people are maybe coming for the second time thinking like, hey, that was a really great visit. Let's go back and check it out again. And it's so remarkably different than they're like, we got duped. Like, you know, this church is not as personal as we thought it was. You know, they like, this is what it really is like. And so maybe they're not gonna come back again. And so we actually think, that if these numbers from this resource, whatever pastor should know, are true, then how do we make the second time visit uh, just as powerful? Maybe not just as powerful. We don't want to just do it again because, again, at some point, this falls off. You know, at some point, you know, they're not, there's not going to be a welcoming committee for, you know, someone who's here for the 400th time. Uh, so, but how do we still make it a notable second time experience? And, um, and we think that there's a priority for that. So that's why we created this stage in uh, the framework to make sure that that second time visit is uh, remarkable, that it's, um, and, and it's remarkable in the way that it needs to be remarkable. And so, uh, but here's the biggest challenge that I think we all face is that um, it's hard to remember people who've only been to your church one time. Now, if you're a church of 10 people, you should have this down. Like it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, but most of us have more than 10 people at our church. We've got, you know, maybe we got dozens, you know, of people that are coming through our area or hundreds of people that are coming through our area. And the problem is, is that the, the volunteer who greeted that family for the first time last week, they may be out of town this week or sick this week. And so how do you remember those kids? Or maybe they're coming to a different service and they're checking out a different service. And so there's, there's really no way for anybody, unless it's a staff person just happened to meet them, and um, so how do you actually do this? 
and how do you actually do it well? And so what we wanted to propose to you is a couple, uh, a couple hacks, you know, a couple um, tricks to how you actually recognize somebody because actually one of our stated goals for stage three of second time guests is that, that people feel remembered, that they came back and somebody remembered their name, somebody remembered their kid's name, some, somebody remembered something about them. And if somebody can come for the second time, and it's not all the hoopla from the first time, but it was something meaningful that somebody remember their name, they, they greeted them, it's so good to have you back again, then that's only gonna, for most people, that's gonna cement in their mind of, this is a place where I can be known. This is a place where if I don't show up, somebody might actually notice and inquire of where we are. And th those are the, usually the things that make people want to attend a church or call a church home. So in this stage, I'm gonna, we're not gonna go into immense detail, we're going to kind of talk about the two ways that you can actually recognize a second time visitor. Okay. One of them is a lot of churches do this. Uh, and I think a lot of churches do this possibly not intentionally, but one of the ways you do that is through your second time gifts. Okay. A lot of churches have like a first time gift. They may give the family coffee mug. They may give the preschoolers visiting some stickers or maybe, you know, something, something that just like is really cool for that first time kid or that first time teenager or whatever. But, uh, but very few churches do a second time gift, but some churches have kind of figured this out pretty well. And usually the way they do this to not make it feel, um, you know, uh, too transactional, too like gimmicky is what they may do is like they have, maybe it's a, 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 a card or, or something that they may mail to the family after their first week, or they hand it to the family when they're there and say like, hey, uh, if you bring this back next week, you can go right over here and give that to them and they're going to have a gift for you. And it's going to be like, maybe it's a brand new shirt for that ministry, or maybe it's, you know, uh, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a special sticker, a slap bracelet or something like that. Uh, or, or maybe that's a coffee tumbler or whatever it may be. But there's some like intrinsic value of, hey, if you come back next week, bring this thing or whatever it may be and we got a gift for you. I know uh, one of the leaders that we talked to when we were in this resource, they talked about for first time visitors, they gave those kids a lanyard that said VIP, like a VIP lanyard. So that way it made it really easy that when the volunteers are on stage and they're calling up volunteer kids to play a game, to win a prize, and they're looking specifically for those hot pink lanyards or those lime green lanyards. So that way it made it really easy for that first time visitor to feel really included. And then for some of those churches we talked to, they said they actually let those kids take the lanyard home, you know, like, because it's kind of cool, you know, for some elementary age kids, they think it's really awesome. And, we say, and if you bring that lanyard back next week, you can trade it up for this really cool gift or whatever it is. Now, here's the reason why this is really powerful is uh, it gives kids something to look forward to. It gives them a next step. It gives parents a next step. And so when they come back for their second visit, whether it's next week, two weeks later, a month later, then they're going to self-identify themselves as, hey, here's my lanyard back, or hey, here's my card that I completed, or here's that thing that you sent me, and I want to get my prize, or I want to get my coupon, or whatever it may be. And so now, all of a sudden, you recognize this is a second-time guest. We can make a really big deal out of them being back here for the second time. So it's really not necessarily about the gift completely. It's not, it's, it's a way to recognize somebody who's here for the second time, okay? So that's kind of one strategy that you can do. Uh, here's another strategy we wanna share with you. And you can do both of these things. The other one is that we are spending lots and lots of money, most of our churches, on a check-in database that families come, they check in for the first time every single uh, week. and um, and usually these databases, they, they have systems set up in place for first time guests, for first time visitors, how they get entered into the system. Personally, this is a, you know, a side note. I don't think that most uh, do a very good job of that. It's clunky, it's not very efficient, but that's another conversation for another time. Uh, however, as far as I know from the databases that I'm familiar with, none of them do anything special for second time guests. Um, so what's gonna typically happen is when they come for the first time, you're somebody on your team or you or a volunteer are going to assign those kids to a small group, to a check-in group, to an area. And so all of a sudden when they come back for the second week, they're going to check into the same place that everybody else does. So again, it's really easy for them to kind of get lost in the crowd. But most check-in systems, 
they allow you to be creative in how you set those up. You can create special groups. You can create special classrooms. And so the other hack that we suggest is what if you were to create, like if, if a second grader comes for the first time, you would normally put them in a second grade check-in group. But maybe instead of just putting them in the normal check-in group, what if you were to create a special group called second time guest second grade check-in group? And so when somebody comes and checks in for the first time, somebody on your team can be watching, you know, that you got a volunteer that's watching that check-in group that all of a sudden when kids and they're automatically assigned. So when they go to check in, they're not choosing between two different second grade groups. This is what they get checked into. And now you have a, an opportunity to recognize a second time guest, even if it's been nine months since the last time they came, they're here for the second time. So you have a couple options. You can try to chase them down and find them and celebrate them there in that moment. Or you can actually be ready for them that when mom and dad come back to pick them up midway through, at the end of the service, you can uh, equip your volunteers in that area to celebrate their second time visit there. Give mom and dad a, a special gift or a special second time guest, you know, content, a resource or whatever it may be and say, hey, it was so good to have Michael back again for the second time. We really hope that you'll come back and visit us again. And that helps families know that they were remembered and you didn't, it wasn't just an email they got after you ran a report two days later, but it was in the moment, an opportunity to recognize them. And I think that again, far less hoopla than first time visit, but the kind of uh, attention they get is more meaningful. It's a, it's a thing that's going to speak to the, the heart of a parent of if I come here, somebody's going to remember that we were here. They're going to know that we were here. And this is the type of church that we could probably make our home. Right. All right. Nick, any, any final thoughts or comments on recognizing second time guest? Well, I would just add, I think this is something we probably you know, talked about when we were making the resource. Every second time guest is different, right? You have your extroverts like you who, yeah, right. you want to meet anybody new you can meet. So when your family attends a church and you come the second time, you absolutely want to be recognized. You've got introverts like me who it's nice to be recognized. I don't probably want maybe the hour long conversation or it just depends. Who knows? Depends on what it's like. Everybody wants to be remembered. Though, right. So regardless of the extrovert or introvert, they will let you kind of determine and let you know uh, where they land with that. What kind of conversation do they want to have? But to just not acknowledge them at all, we're missing it. Right. We're missing a right. point there. And I would even say, like, kind of go along with your second idea there. You're saying put them in a specific group or some way that you can know, hey, this is they, they've come for the second time. I know in our church management system, too, we can even just have a search that said that we can run that day that says, hey, give me everybody who attended once before and today. You know, they attended once before and they are attending today. And we could just run that every week. And we haven't done this yet. But since we created this resource, that's something I'm looking to do and implement in our church. And then we can help them feel remembered. Because I think most second time guests don't feel remembered. In fact, they don't even feel acknowledged. Or, you know, some of our churches, uh, we might over recognize guests, you know, think about being in the service and raise your hand and let me give you this and all that kind of stuff. People want to be remembered, but you know, not, not over remembered, not harassed or anything like that. I think we miss that sometimes. I think for years, our church has maybe missed the opportunity to help people feel remembered, just because we want to help them feel anonymous too but they don't have to be against each other. Like both can happen. Right, that's awesome. Well, cool, well, there's lots to do as you dive into this resource. Um, it'd be interesting to see as you uh, begin to dive into this content, the follow-up content and all these things, put this into practice, like figuring out what kind of gifts do you wanna give away for a second time visitor or, uh, or how do you wanna set up your check-in system to recognize that, but whatever you do, like figure out what works best for the context of your church and then make sure that anytime someone comes for the second time, that they actually feel noticed, they feel remembered when they come. And if, if you do that, you're gonna retain far more families uh, who come to your church.